Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I've been an eBay reseller since 2002. Yeah, 2002. This was the age of AOL and GeoCities. But today's video is all about how to increase your sales on eBay. Why? Because... Now one of the number one things that people ask me is, how can I increase my eBay sales? How do I get views on my item? So in today's video, I'm going to share with you 13 tips on how to increase your sales guaranteed or your money back. Which by the way, this is of course a free video. So why 13 tips? Just because it's Taylor Swift's favorite number or because there's 13 stories on the Tower of Terror? No, that's just how many I came up with. All right, so that's enough for me. Let's go ahead and get started with the tips. Number one is to promote your listings. eBay would not have this feature if they did not want you to use it and of course line their pocketbooks. And of course, when you line their pocketbooks, they're a little more apt to show your items. In fact, did you know that not every single listing shows up in the searches? In fact, it's part of the eBay's terms of service. So the best way to get your listings in front of buyers is to grease that eBay palm just a little bit. So personally, I promote all of my listings that are $25 and above at 2.1 to 2.3%. Now you might wonder why the 0.1 to the 0.3%. Well, you have to promote your listings at at least 2% to get your foot in the door. And I figure we're gonna leapfrog those people that are just doing the bare minimum by adding the 0.1 or the 0.3 at the end of our 2%. And you'll notice also when you go to promote your listings that eBay will suggest an ad rate that seems usually rather high. Sometimes I've seen it as high as 30%. Don't, do not do that. That is ludicrous. You need to keep in mind these fees are additional on top of the ones that eBay already charges you. And they also include your shipping and taxes. Tip number two. So remember on Sunday mornings when you used to get the paper with all the glossy ads with stuff you needed and a lot you probably didn't? And you saw that that CD was $5 off? Well, that might have motivated you to run out and go get something that maybe you didn't plan on getting. Well, give your buyers the same feeling by running a coupon or a sale. Everybody loves a sale. I like to run my sales for short periods of time, three to five days, usually never more than a week because I like to create urgency. If somebody sees that your sale is going on for a month, two months, or indefinitely, there is no rush to get that item. It's your own private sale. It's like getting those Wayfair coupons in the mail that are just for you when you were only thinking of getting that dresser. Tip number three is send offers. I typically send offers for at least five to $10 off. Sometimes I'll do more if I've had the item sitting for a while. Sending an offer on an item reminds buyers that they were looking at something and puts that item in front of their eyes yet again. Speaking of offers, tip number four is add offers to your listings. I do this for all of my listings that have been on eBay for at least 30 days. Everyone likes to feel like they're getting a deal, which is why sometimes you will get low ball offers on your items, sometimes half off or 75% off or more. If you get an offer from a buyer that seems ridiculously low, recheck comps first. Prices may have dropped from the competition drastically on that item. So never hit decline, always counter and always recheck the comps. I've seen the trend where people just do a dollar drop on an item. Personally, I think that's really unprofessional and it's not helpful to you or the buyer. Rather come back with an offer of something that you would accept. Even if the offer seems really low and you think they're not a real buyer, counter anyways. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten a buyer to come up off of their original offer to where I want them to be. Tip number five is end listings and click sell similar. This makes your listings fresh again in the eyes of the search engine and the buyer. Sometimes searching on eBay is like walking into a packed store filled with the same kinds of items, yet you get overwhelmed. And you may assume that because it's been there already, it's already been picked over and it's really not that good. Shoppers that have alerts for certain items will get a notification or an email that a new listing has been created for that item. Now, when you click the sell similar button, it creates a brand new item number and makes your listing fresh and spanking new again. Make sure your items are hot and fresh, just like a Krispy Kreme donut. Number six is leave feedback for others. And hopefully 
that they will also leave you feedback. Feedback isn't everything, but if a buyer is looking at two similar items and they see that one seller has a higher feedback rating, they may be more likely to buy from that person than buy from someone with a lower feedback score. Number seven is list more items. Obviously, the more items that you have in your store, the more items that you can sell. Now, I'm not talking about listing junk items, lost leaders, or anything like that. List quality items. We aren't trying to sell ice during a snowstorm. Sometimes adding new fresh items to your store will boost up your old items and gets that stuff moving out too. Number eight is to add international or what was formerly called the global shipping program on your listings. This is so easy. It requires no extra effort for you. You don't have to fill out any forms or do anything additional. eBay does it all for you. All you have to do is slap your label on the package like you normally would, and it goes to a hub where eBay will then send it to the final destination. It's super simple, and you're increasing your buyer pool by a lot. So a buyer may not be able to get something in their fine country of Genovia, but if you open up your doors to them, you have now increased your storefront to a whole new audience. Number nine is to recheck your comps on your items. Prices then may not be the prices now. Trends and tastes change, which is why low rise jeans went out of fashion, yet they're back in. Also with shipping rate increases, the price that a buyer is willing to pay for a certain item may have changed too. If you don't know how to check comps, I do have a video on how I do that and how I price my items and I'll link that in the comments down below. And you may be wondering why you should recheck your comps if you have best offer on. It's because if you have an item at let's say $60 and your competition has an item at $30, no one is going to bother sending you an offer for that $30 even if you may take it. Why bother with the extra effort when someone else already has the price you want? This is why a lot of stores are going out of business because people don't wanna have to do the work with coupons and wait for sales. They want the item that they want right now. Number 10 is to give your listings a little bit of a facelift. So this could be adding keywords, changing your titles, moving words around, and checking the categories. Make sure things are in the right place where they should. Check your item specifics. See if there's any that you can fill in. If you're stumped and you don't know what to do, look at sold listings. Those people have already aced the test. So maybe not copy, but get some ideas and inspiration from their listings. What did they do that you could also add to your listing? So check the spelling, move the words around. Do you need to add brand, color, style, style number? The year that the item was made, maybe certain keywords like the word vintage. Pretend your dad is telling you about something he saw, but he didn't know it was called. What would he call it? Use up all 80 characters in that title. Unused spaces in your title is unused opportunities. Expanding on that, tip number 11, check your item specifics. Sometimes eBay adds or changes the requirements on your listings. And sometimes they autofill these into something weird and they populate this from your description and sometimes it's not accurate and it might be holding you back. This is particularly true in the last year when eBay started auto-populating the item specifics from your description. Sometimes it's like playing telephone with a toddler. What you wrote may have been taken out of context by eBay. For example, I've seen things listed with the color pink change to the brand pink, like by Victoria's Secret, or the color blue added with a character of Blue's Clues. And yes, I have seen eBay change the specifics after you have already gone through and clear them out. So go back through and again and adjust them if needed. Number 12, if you have similar items that are just sitting around like lazy bums, like this one, lock them up in similar sets so the buyer can save on shipping. Again, shipping costs have gotten to be outrageous. So someone may not want to pay seven to nine dollars to have one item shipped, but if they can get two of a similar kind of item or many of the similar kind of item, sometimes you don't even have to retake photos. Rather, you can use Canva to create a collage of your items. So for example, you can take the photo from one listing A and then take photos from listing B, make it into the cover photo on your eBay listing, and then all the photos after that are the previous photos you've already taken from those two listings combined. And our final tip number 13 is if all else fails, 
cross list. Half of my income comes from eBay and the other half is split up between Poshmark, Mercari, and Facebook Marketplace. If I only listed on eBay, my sales would literally, literally be cut in half. Cross listing is an easy way to increase your income with very little effort and get your items in front of more buyers. Why? Sometimes eBay is just too saturated on an item and you're just a Nemo in a big blue sea, but you wanna be the Nemo in the aquarium. It's a little sad, but yeah, you wanna be the only clownfish in that tank. This is also why companies sell the same item at Walmart, Target, CVS, Walgreens. You never really know where your buyer is going to be. Increasing where you sell increases your chances to sell. So that's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a great big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Please let me know which of these tips has helped you increase your sales. If there is something you don't know how to do, please leave me a comment down below. Maybe I'll create a video tutorial just for you. We'll see you next time. Bye. It's like a family tree